So I think today I want to do a whole different type of video where I kind of want to talk about why some of your rare Pokemon cards tend to have a price that I guess you would technically call bulk pricing. Because we see something like Teal Mass Ogre Pond EX. This is a regular double rare from Twilight Masquerade. Current market value is about $8.60. And you see here, all the listings range from anywhere from $8 to $10 on the front page. And then once you go to the next page, you're already above the $10 mark, right? And you might be asking yourself, if this regular EX is worth that much, why can't my other EXs be worth at least a dollar, right? We see some EXs, for example, go for 50 cents, 25 cents even. And I kind of want to talk about that a bit today. Now, another great example of an EX that goes for kind of above what your average EX goes for is Dragapult EX, which right now you can find copies for anywhere from $3.95, $3.78 to about $5 a copy. And market price showing $3.81. So you were roughly $4, $5 for a copy of Dragapult after shipping. But I also want to point out a couple of things that we're going to talk about in this video. First and foremost, the amount of listings for every card. We see here that Dragapult's holding a $4 market price as a regular double rare with 400 listings. Teal Mass, on the other hand, only has 190 and has nearly the double market price of Dragapult. But both of these guys do not have bulk pricing. If you were to pull these out of a booster pack, you would not consider these bulk. You would probably try to sell these to a player who might want them. Probably try to sell these to a collector who needs them. You would not put these in a bulk box and sell them for 25 cents to your local card shop down the road. But some cards that tend to go a little bit more in the bulk price range or a little bit on the lower end kind of strike me as interesting. I want to talk about a few different cards and just kind of show the trends that hurt these cards prices. First and foremost being some Flora. Some Flora is a stunning card. I think this has an amazing artwork done by Shinya Komatsu and Roughly, you can find copies for about $2 plus shipping. Um, if you shop around a bit, you probably could pay under $3 after shipping. And one of the reasons why this card's a little bit on the lower side, there's 209 listings. But it's still holding a decent value compared to something like Torkoal, who's got a slightly lower, just slightly lower market value. And it has a slight more amount of listings. Torkoal is also another good one done by Masa. It's got a very calming vibe. But then we go to something like Blood Moon or Saluna. Now, Blood Moon or Saluna is a slightly playable card. 372 listings, though. But because of its playability, it's going to hold a market value of about $1.75. So this is another EX that if you were to pull it out of a pack, you may not want to put it in bulk. While it will not get you your pack value back, it is at least worth a $1.50 plus shipping. So it is a decent card to pull out. But then I want to point it, I wanted to point out all these cards that have a decent value because then we move on to something like Screen Tell Full Art. Double rares are much easier to pull. And I would argue that illustration rares generally are much easier to pull than an ultra rare in Twilight Masquerade. But Screen Tell EX, we see a near mint here for 84 cents plus shipping. They have free shipping for $5. So you can go buy $5 worth of cards from Dinochi MTG and spend 84 cents for this card. You see, there's a couple of recent sales for 90 cents. Why is this card so low? Why is this card a bulk price full art? 240 listings for a full art. That means in my estimation that most of the people that probably pull this card don't want it. Most of the people pulling this card are probably putting it for sale somewhere. Another card that's a great example of this is Greninja EX. While some people have found some niche playability in Greninja EX, it is not as playable as cards like Teal Mask Ogre Pond. So Greninja EX, while it's still selling for about a dollar a copy, it is much lower than the other cards we have. But we also see there's a much higher listing amount than Teal Mask, nearly double the amount of listings for Greninja. So Greninja has a much lower market price. While it's still holding steady for a regular EX, it's hard to attribute to whether that's playability or whether that's just because it's a Greninja card. But overall, you're still finding copies being listed for 75% plus shipping, $2 a copy for this card after shipping. 
And that's if you don't buy it with other cards. Cornerstone Mask Ogre Pond is a great example of a card of the same rarity as Greninja, Dragapult, and Teal Mask Ogre Pond actually going for that bulk pricing. So let's say you were to open up a booster pack and you know you got a hit. It ends up being Cornerstone Mask Ogre Pond or Wellspring Mask or Hearthflame Mask because all three of them are pretty much similar in pricing. Market price is 53 cents. 491 listings with plenty, plenty of listings under $1. What that tells me is just like I said with some previous cards, almost everybody who pulls this card is just putting it for sale. But why does Teal Mask and Dragapult and then Greninja have more market value than this card? Because of playability. It's as simple as that. This card is nowhere near as playable as its other cards. It's nowhere near as desirable as its other cards. And even then, even if we compare the Pokemon on it, it's not as cool as Dragapult or Greninja. So you're not going to have your average everyday collector filling up their binder full of Ogre Pond EXs. So Ogre Pond EX, unfortunately, because of the mass amount, the massive amount ending up on market. Now this is 491 listings. Imagine how many copy sets that had to be when you got listings with five, uh, listing with seven, multiple listings with two and three. There's probably 2,000 plus copies of this card sitting on the TCG player market. Ignoring the fact that there's plenty of TCG shops out there that have plenty of these available, ignoring the fact that there are tons of these listed on eBay, you have thousands on TCG player that are not moving at a fast enough rate to even remotely make this card return. When I got back into Pokemon at the uh, in mid XY era, a regular EX in mid XY era still went for about two to three dollars, even the lowest tier EXs. And that's because Pokemon cards weren't being opened up in mass like they are today. So many people are opening up Pokemon cards. 491 listings, guys. If we went to any other TCG, let's say Yu Gi Oh, for example. Yu-Gi-Oh! has got a set right now, Battle of the Legend Terminus Revenge, that has a $600 card. And yet, if we look at Ultra Rares, which are guaranteed in packs, by the way, if we look at their Ultra Rare listings, 132, 181, 140, 200. We don't see any of the listings, even for the least desirable cards, even for the lowest market cards sitting at one cent, we don't see 500 listings for that card. Even the least desirable cards for a Yu-Gi-Oh set with a $600 card in it, we do not see that many listed cards. I think Pokemon is that rare exception of a card game where you have so many people opening up and so many people selling their extras or so many people only chasing certain cards but still opening up packs that you end up with 500 plus copies of certain cards listed. Another great example, Survival Brace. Survival Brace is a decent trainer, a decent ace spec, but there are so many other ace specs that are so much better. So the market price for this card is only 50 cents. 488 listings. Now, one of the things that ace specs have against them is most collectors don't want to collect ace specs. Most collectors are looking for illustration rares, special illustration rares, ultra rares. They don't want ace specs. So the ace specs here are going to get listed. And unfortunately, because this card is nowhere near as playable as something like Unfair Stamp or Prime Catcher, it's got bulk pricing. So if you were to pull a pink card and you didn't see Unfair Stamp, you probably pulled something that's worth less than $2. And if you're unlucky, you probably pulled Survival Brace, which is worth $0.55. Cents. Now moving on to Temporal Force is another great example of a double rare that's pretty easy to pull, holding a great market value. 450 or not 451 well 451 cents but four dollars and 51 cents 219 listings but this card moves like crazy because it's playable many people are using this card in their decks right now because of the playability and because it's a double rare this card is holding decent value but it's holding more value than an ultra rare gouging fire ex Gouging Fire EX Ultra Rare, which is harder to pull than the Raging Bolt Double Rare, has copies for less than $2 a copy on the market right now as of recording. With market price sitting at $265, uh, $265 now, 
there are people who spend more than that. Clearly, one of the last sales says 440, but there are plenty of available copies out of the 241 listings that are under the $3 mark. Uh, and some of them are under $2. Even if you go past the uh, the free $5 shipping threshold and then you're starting to see some of the other listings. So you got a lot of low cards on the market. But again, this card is much rarer than Raging Bolt. But I would argue that it is much cheaper for a full art. Bianca's Devotion, Waifu Full Art Trainer. Shout out to Stilo and Kree and the Full Art Trainer Cult. Uh, but you're finding copies under $2. You're finding copies consistently listed at the $2 mark with free shipping if you order enough cards. So roughly this card's got only a $2 market value. And this is a waifu. This is Bianca's Devotion, a very popular Pokemon character. Master Ball, going back to the idea that these A specs end up massively on the shelf and just crash down. Master Ball, a decent card. Search your deck for any Pokemon, reveal it and put it in your hand. Just a free search for any Pokemon. Some decks play this. Still only at $1.55 because there's so many listings. Walking Wakey X. Even worse than Gouging Fire, a dollar fifty-five market was so many copies under that dollar fifty-five. Drastic decline, but even then, you see here in the beginning uh, in mid-April, it was only at a two-dollar market price, and it's just gone down since. And this is an ultra rare, a harder to pull. Salvatore ultra rare, dollar one dollar. This is at the point where you can call this guy a bulk full art. A bulk for a uh, full art trainer. Iron Leaves EX. Rumored to be playable. Didn't turn out as playable as people wanted. 74 cents for a double rare. 600 listings. 600 listings. That is insane when you compare it to any other trading card game. Because no trading card is being opened up in mass like this. And it, it's crazy when people say Pokemon is dead. And then we end up with this many listings for a double rare. Like that is 593 different sellers on TTG player. That have listed their cards. And I'm not one of them because I don't have this card in stock. So think of how many sellers have already sold through their inventory for this card. That is insane. How many sellers on this market? Gouging Fire, 515. Market price, 73 cents. Probably holds a little bit of value compared to Iron Leaves just because it is Entei. And it is the one I think resembles his original form the best. Caesar EX, market price of 60 cents. 544 listings. This is from Temple Forces as well. So you see all these double rares. One out of three packs will get you a hit on average. One out of three uh, packs can give you a card worth 50 cents. Bulk pricing EX is because just how many packs are being opened. How many packs are being opened? And because a card is unlucky and doesn't end up playable, it has no real value, even though it is harder to pull. Reboot Pod, another A spec with a market value of 61 cents, 580 listings. Moving to Scarlet and Violet Base, even a popular Pokemon like Gyarados, 540 listings. Market price shows $1.21, but there are tons of copies under $1. Bulk pricing even for a popular Pokemon like Gyarados. Let's look at Great Tusky X. A dollar market price for a double rare. Or not a double rare, an ultra rare. Now, I will say that uh, I think the ultra rares in Scarlet and Violet Base are a little bit hard, are a little bit easier to hit than something like Temporal Forces or Twilight Masquerade, where they're uh I don't see you hitting as many ultra rares on average per box, but at the same time, a lot of full arts, a lot of ultra rares under $1. Spide Ops is even worse, and I really find this disrespectful because I love Baked Beans EX, but Baked Beans EX, 96 cents for a market price. Plenty of copies under $1. Oink alone, 84 cents market. Plenty of copies under $1. And these are ultra rares, by the way, guys. These are not double rares. You, you hit four textured hits per box on average, and you're not guaranteed ultra rares out of any of them. So these are a little bit harder to pull, yet they're sitting at less than a dollar each. Gita. This is a great example because 
I know I've been talking about ultra rares and illustration rares and double rares a lot, but even the special illustration rares, even the most desirable cards are not free from being victims to this. Gita, very awesome trainer, champion of the league in Scarlet and Violet. Market price $271. Plenty of copies under $3. It's in Obsidian Flames. I know Obsidian Flames special illustration rares are pretty easy to hit, but even then, 300 listings for a special illustration rare has driven it down to sub $3, which is crazy because it's held that sub $3 for months now. Ice Q is the same effect. I think this is a beautiful, simplistic artwork, in my personal opinion, one of my favorite cards from Descent. $234 for the market price, 250 listings. If you compare that to any special illustration rare, like for example, let's pull up uh, Twilight Masquerade, right? And let's just do Rarity Special Illustration Rare. Not a single one of these illustration rares have over 100 listings. Your closest being Hearthflame Ogre Pond, and I would argue that that's the reason why Hearthflame and Cornerstone are probably some of the lowest with uh, Wellspring Mask. Because they're probably some of the easiest to pull, or at least some of the least desirable that they end up on the market. But look at all, all these cards. Not a single one of them is over 100 copies available on market. Ice Q, on the other hand, 250 copies. Gita, 300 copies. And I think the reason why you ended up with so many of these on market is because this set was cracked like crazy for people chasing Charizards. So it has drastically, drastically increased the amount of these copies of cards that end up on market. What about Poppy? Poppy is though probably the worst affected out of all of the like cooler trainers and cooler SIRs from Obsidian Flames. Sure, Reverum might be below this, but uh, it's not a card I like, so we're not going to talk about it. But market price $1.92 for an SIR. This is great for anybody who wants this card in their collection. But nearly 300 copies ended up on the market, which drove this card down drastically. Palafin, $1.77 with 320 copies. A very nice symmetrical artwork, beautiful stunning card, but plenty of copies under that $2 mark. Gita Full Art, $1.36. It has gone up recently because it was at a low of like $1.14 and $1.08. But still, you're finding plenty of copies under $1.25. Rhyme, 378 copies. Only 69 cents market price for an ultra rare full art trainer. 69 cents for a full art trainer. And it has drastically declined from a dollar in mid-June. That just says that there's more copies that ended up on market and more people just drastically decreasing their prices on this just to try to move it. And then Greedent EX is my last example of a card. 477 listings. 50 cents, guys. So when you're opening up booster packs, you might ask yourself, man, I pulled this amazing textured EX. Or man, I pulled this full art trainer. I wonder how much it's worth. And then you see that 50 cents price tag. Hopefully you guys kind of got an understanding of why that's the case. Because there's so many less desirable cards. So many cards that are being put to market in order to chase those higher end cards. Once again, going back to, where was it? Twilight Masquerade, for example. There are a ton of cards that are gonna be the victims of chasing that Greninja and that Carmine and that Perrin. People are gonna be chasing these cards. People are probably gonna start chasing the Kirin and the Blood Moon or Saluna and the Tilt Mask. And unfortunately, we're gonna see more Cornerstones and more Heart Flames and more Torkoals and more Blood Moons and more screen tells and more Greninja EXs on the market that just drive these prices down even more. And I wanted to point this out because I've, I found it so interesting the other day when I seen that there were like 600 copies of double rares or 600 listings for like double rares on the market. And then you look at any other TCG, even if we went over to One Piece and looked at like, let's say um, 500 years in the future, right? Even if we looked at One Piece, right? And we went commons. Only 200 listings for commons. And if you go to a Pokemon common, right? Like, let's say Twilight Masquerade. And we go to Rarity common for Pokemon. 800 
700 listings. It is a massive difference to how much Pokemon ends up on the market compared to any other TCG, even sometimes popular as One Piece. And I don't even have to look at stuff like Digimon or Dragon Ball or Disney Lorcana to know that it is a massive difference between these TCGs. For example, I will pull up Lorcana. Lorcana, 400. Now, there are some that have 600 listings, but when you look at Lorcana, there's a reason why Lorcana probably faces the same thing. Look at all these enchanted cards and look at the prices the enchanted cards have and look at the amount of listings for these enchanted cards on the market. So maybe Lorcana is pretty close to Pokemon, but I don't see any of the other TCGs dealing with that. Even something like the rarity collection, right? Even something like the rarity collection. Let's see let's see a super rare in the rarity collection. 100 200 listings for most of the cards. Some of them slightly crack in the 200 uh listings, but as I could tell, it doesn't look like we have we have some close to the 300s, but that's still barely half of the commons in Pokémon. So when you pull a pack and you pull a Till, Ma uh, Till Mask Ogre Pond, you're like, wow, that's $10. That's awesome. But then your next pack, you pull Survival Brace. And you're like, oh, this, card, this card's cool. This card's textured. This card's rare. Maybe it's worth something. And you see $0.45 cents lowest. Um, don't be surprised, guys. Just understand that a lot of cards will suffer as long as Pokemon is open in mass like it is. And a lot of cards will end up being really really hard to recover from this while there's cards that are very desirable in sets and we'll see it slowly slowly heal as more and more people realize that ripping open for profit is never the way to go and more and more people continue to trend over to buying singles like i've been seeing lately with a lot of social media posts but at the same time there are still tons and tons of people that are ripping pokemon packs and they're selling anything they don't want and a lot of people are only searching for those top level cards. They're only searching for those illustration rares, right? They're only searching for these special illustration rares. And even in this case, look, the only two cards people are searching for from this set are Pidgeot and Charizard. So people are searching for certain cards and certain cards only. And what ends up happening is all those other cards they pull end up on the market. And you end up with tons and tons of listings for that card. Anyways, guys, I just wanted to talk about this topic because I thought it was just something interesting I noted. Bye.